and I think you guys all saw this coming, but my top driver for the 2021 Formula 1 season is... Hey, what's going on everyone? Vasco here and welcome back to the channel. So the 2021 Formula 1 season is now truly behind us. So now we need to actually take a look at the performance of each team and driver in order to determine who the top performers were for this season. So without further ado, in this video, I'm going to tell you who I think were my top three drivers for the 2021 Formula 1 season. And spoiler alert, it's not Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen. Let's go. Okay, so this list of my top three is purely subjective, but it takes into account the performances of each driver. So it was actually very tricky for me to only pick three drivers. So this will kind of be a top five because I have two honorable mentions. But we'll get to that in the end. So before that, I'm going to tell you who my top three drivers were. So coming in at third place, we have Pierre Gasly. So Pierre Gasly ended up the season in ninth place with 110 points. And that is really amazing on that Alpha Tauri because he really managed to pull some results out of that car that out outperformed the car performance, if you, if you understand what I mean. So Pierre Gasly had the best finish of fourth this season, which is really amazing because come to think of it, his car was not capable of 4th place finishes, but at the end of the season, he was out qualifying and sometimes out racing both Ferrari and McLaren. So this was a very amazing performance by Pierre Gasly once again, so this time we didn't have any podiums or any standout performances just like last year he won at Monza, but he was very consistent and the season paid off big time because he had 110 points. Now, Pierre Gasly also managed to out-qualify Yuki Tsunoda, which, okay, was a rookie, but still, Yuki is a very fast driver and has a lot of potential, so Pierre managed to out-qualify him 21 to 1. So this means that just on that one occasion in Abu Dhabi was Yuki Tsunoda faster than Pierre Gasly in qualifying, but I think that come out Abu Dhabi, Pierre was really not happy with his setup, so that was probably why. But something that actually impressed me a lot was Pierre's capability to be on the points week in and week out. So Alpine ended taking fifth place from AlphaTauri in the last few races, but that was not due to Gasly's performances, that was more on Yuki Tsunoda. So Pierre Gasly scored 110 points and Yuki Tsunoda scored much, much less. So Pierre really got the best out of that car and he's again showing us that he's a top scoring driver, he's a top level driver right there with Norris, Leclerc, Sainz, etc. So Pierre Gasly was really a top driver this season, but something that puts him into third place and not first or second was actually the performance of that Alpha Tauri car and the consistency. So you can see that from this graph right here that Pierre Gasly really ended up having a lot of DNF. So in this graph, once the point reaches the 20th place, it's not because Gasly got 20th, it's because he DNF'd. So once Gasly DNF'd so many times, there was really not a lot of potential for him to reach a higher place in the championship and even though a lot of these DNFs weren't his fault his consistency was not really there when compared to my top two drivers so Pierre Gasly is in third place on this list and I think he will continue improving and I really feel he deserves a shot in the top tier car in the next few years and I would be amazed if we don't see him in Alpine in a year or two because French car, French driver, it really makes sense so this is my third place, now let's move on to second place but before we get to my number two driver, I'm really trying to get to 700 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you guys could help me reach that goal, it would mean the world to me. We are just seven subscribers away and I think we got this until the 31st of December. So thank you and now back to the video. Okay, so in second place and really unsurprisingly, if you got to know me during the season, is Lando Norris. So Lando Norris finished sixth in the Drivers' Championship with 150 points and the best result of second in Italy, which was also his best career result. But that doesn't really speak of what Norris' season was. So Norris was in the top three of the championship for a long, long time at the beginning of the season and he had what I think was one of the stronger beginnings of the season that I've ever seen in Formula 1. So he was really in the top three, he was very consistent and he got a couple of podiums and I think that he really didn't get that fifth place in the championship just because of a few bad lucks here and there. So Norris also had a standout race in Russia where he qualified on pole position which was amazing and then he only lost the race in those last couple of laps because of the rain because Lando was really making a star drive in Russia and I think he would have won that race. I think he would have been able to hold Lewis Hamilton on that race. 
but the rain just came at the wrong place and I have a video about that right here if you want to watch it after you watch this one but I mean Lando Norris had an amazing start to the season but the reason that he's in second place and not in first place is that in the beginning of the season Lando Norris was always in the top five and always fighting for those podiums once the opportunities came but coming to that middle of the season and beginning with Hungary with that DNF we see that Lando Norris actually had a big dip in performance. Now, this big dip is not on him entirely because you can see that f the time that Norris had this dip was once Ferrari introduced that engine upgrade that really pushed Ferrari ahead of McLaren. So he was fighting with a slower car to Ferrari. So it's normal that if the Ferrari car gets faster than McLaren, that the average result for Norris gets a little bit lower. But even still, I think that Norris never got back his mojo from the beginning of the season. He really lost a lot of performance and momentum from that middle point of the season onwards. And he never really got that back. Now, he had a few good performances at the end of the season, but not again in that top five where they needed to be. And during that triple header of Mexico, Brazil and Qatar, Norris only scored a couple of points. A few of them were bad luck with that puncture in Qatar, but even still, I think that towards the end of the season, Lando's performances really got worse. And I think he was still more consistent than Gasly and that his championship performance really shows it. And I think he had the better of his much, much more experienced teammate in Daniel Ricciardo. So I think Lando, against all expectations, did a very, very good job. And I also think that Lando was a very good driver in the teammate playing because he really was a good teammate to Daniel Ricciardo and supported Daniel when Daniel was ahead of him. And especially in that race in Italy, Lando celebrated with the team in a way I didn't think was possible because... It was his first win right in front of him. He was faster than Daniel, but for the sake of the team, he got in second place. The team told him to hold position and he did and he was on the podium smiling. So Lando is a really good team player and I'm very excited to see what Lando Norris evolves to in the next couple of years because I think we have a future potential world champion in Lando Norris and I cannot wait to see it. Okay, so now let's get to my top driver for the 2021 Formula 1 season. And I think you guys all saw this coming, but my top driver for the 2021 Formula 1 season is Carlos Sainz. So the Chile man himself got my top pick for the 2021 Formula 1 season for a couple of reasons. So Carlos Sainz finished the season with 164 and a half points and he was in fifth place. So he was best of the rest. And if you see the point standings, he was very close to Sergio Perez. So Carlos Sainz has a standout result of second in Monaco, which was amazing to see because Monaco was really a race that Ferrari was supposed to win with Charles Leclerc, but Charles unfortunately had that did not start DNS because of his gearbox crash in qualifying. Carlos Sainz really picked the team up in Monaco and got that second place result, which was something that he really needed. And I think that over this season, Carlos Sainz has really stepped his foot in as a real authority in Formula 1. He was the best teammate, in my opinion, that Max Verstappen ever had. And then he went on to McLaren and beat Lando Norris for every single season that they were together. And Lando, as I said before, is a future star and a future world champion. And now he has come into Ferrari, Charles Leclerc's team, and he has beat him in his first season. And you can say that he only beat Leclerc because of a few lucky results here and there. But that's the thing. You need to be in striking distance of your teammate in order to get to take advantage of their bad results. And Carlos Sainz was really the best driver at adapting to a new team this season. And he was really quickly on the same pace as Leclerc. Now, I think that overall Leclerc might have been a little bit better over the course of the season. But Carlos Sainz was there when it counted and he got the big points the big results and the big podiums. So he was really my star driver for this season for the way that he adapted to that Ferrari car faster than any other driver adapted to a new team and then was able to lead that team to the final race and pick up advantage after advantage once Leclerc was having bad races. Now I'm not saying that Leclerc season was bad but coming into Ferrari against a highly rated Charles Leclerc and beating him in his first season at his own team I think it's really amazing and we were all expecting Carlos Sainz to come in with a number two status until Mick Schumacher was ready to go to Ferrari. 
But now I think that we can begin seeing Carlos Sainz as Ferrari, one of Ferrari's really number one expectations for the next couple of years. And I think that if Ferrari really develops a new good car for 2022, we are going to have a very good inter-team rivalry between Leclerc and Sainz. And I think that things can get ugly once they are fighting for the big points. And then there was another thing. Carlos Sainz was the most consistent driver of 2021, with the exception of Max Verstappen. So if you look at Carlos's points right here, you can see that Carlos was outside of the top 10 in only two occasions. He had zero DNFs. Ferrari was a very reliable car, but even still, he was in the top 10 at every single race bar two in a 22 race season. So I think that Sainz was a very standout driver and his consistency driving a new car and the speed at which he adapted. I mean, those races where he didn't score weren't the first races. So in the first races for Ferrari adapting to that new car, he was always in the top 10. He just two unlucky results where he was, he was outside of the top 10. So I think that Sainz really delivered more than Ferrari were hoping, more than Charles Leclerc was hoping. And I think he was my standout driver of the season. And I think he's a future world champion if Ferrari can deliver him a car. And one thing that we can say about Carlos Sainz is that he's number two no more. So those were my top three drivers for the 2021 Formula 1 season. But before we go, I really want to know your top three drivers in the comments down below. So let me know if you agree with mine and why you do or you don't. And let me know your top three in the comments down below. But before we go, I really want to get to two honorable mentions. So firstly, as I mentioned before, I really want to mention Charles Leclerc because Leclerc with the Ferrari before the engine upgrade managed two pole positions at Monaco and Baku, two back-to-back -back poles, which he unfortunately wasn't able to take advantage of. He almost won the race at Silverstone and took major advantage of that Lewis and Max crash in order to almost win at Silverstone. He played the team game with Sainz way more than I expected, so they were swapping positions with team orders way more times than I was expecting. And even once Ferrari told Leclerc to let Sainz through, I thought that Leclerc was going to fight those orders, but no, he played the team game and that's something that I enjoy a lot. And also, Leclerc really lost two championship positions and at the final race. So going into Abu Dhabi, he was in fifth place and he had a very unlucky strategy race with all the crazy things that happened at that race. And I think that if it wasn't for that late safety car, Leclerc would be fifth in the championship and we were going to have a very different conversation. But even if Leclerc had gotten fifth in the championship, my top driver would still be Carlos Sainz. But I think that Leclerc and Sainz are very evenly matched. And he was one of my best drivers of the season, Leclerc also, because the amount of times he got into fourth place and didn't get on the podium just because something crazy didn't happen with the top three, I think really speaks a lot about Leclerc because both in 2020 and in 21, he really pushed a dog of a car to the fourth place very consistently. And that's something I really admire in a driver. And my other top pick for a driver that didn't make it quite to the top three was Sergio Checo Perez. So Checo was one of the drivers with signs that really made the best adaptation to a new car in 2021. And the Red Bull was very tricky to drive for him at the beginning of the season because he was trying the same race setups as Max, but he very quickly started to try to tune the Red Bull to his own way. And quickly he got a win at Baku and he really played the ultimate team game at both Turkey and amazingly at Abu Dhabi, fending off Lewis Hamilton in order to assure that Max Verstappen could win those races. And he played such a team game that if you saw, if you seen my last video about the strategy at, at Abu Dhabi, I think that the championship would not have been won by Max Verstappen if it wasn't for those Sergio Perez defenses. So Red Bull really hold him a title and I think that they should renew his contract for a long, long time because he's really playing that team game very, very well. And again, if it wasn't for him, Max Verstappen would not be world champion. So Checo Perez is my last honorable mention. So this minute for this video, I really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. But just before I go, I really want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. And if you don't, just have a happy holiday with the ones you love. Because after the crazy last few years that we have had around the world, 
I think we all deserve to take a break and celebrate with the people we love. So take a little bit of time for yourself this holiday and try to enjoy it. This minute race video, I really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to check my latest video right here. And I hope to see you one more time be before the end of the year next week with my video on the 2022 Formula 1 predictions. This minute first video and I really hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye! Hey what's going on everyone, Vasco here and welcome back to the channel. And with the Formula 1 20...